I'm trying to gauge the temperature. I'm trying to look glamorous, but I quite want to put on a cardigan. And I, it's quite, I was just saying, I'm trying to work out whether I'm more likely to be cold with fear or hot with embarrassment. Let's do a straw poll. <laughs> Party on or off? Oh, oh hello. <laughs> oh, we got the loaded <laughs> crowd in. I think if you look at me, you'll find that the choice between cardigan and looking sexy does not have to be made. Right, guys? Oh. <laughs> cardigan on or cardigan off? <laughs> And welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. In the news this week, to show there are no hard feelings, David Miliband takes his brother Ed for a ride in his new speedboat. <laughs> At the Commonwealth Games, organisers gather for the closing ceremony and breathe a sigh of relief that nothing truly disastrous happened. Too soon? <laughs> and in Tokyo, inventors of the latest high-tech toy, the KickBot, admit it may have been a mistake to base the software on the England team's recent performance. <laughs> Using techniques I learnt filming Sherlock Holmes, I can instantly deduce that the woman on Ian's team is a columnist, presenter and poker player. How, you may ask? simply by looking at the card given to me by the researcher. <laughs> it's Victoria Curran. <laughs> Similarly, on Paul's team, some comedian bloke, what was good last time he was on the show? <laughs> it's John Richardson. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Paul and John, take a look at this. Oh, yes, this is the uh, ongoing story as we speak of the uh, happy news of the mine has been released. Although, uh, apparently, viewers are getting rather fed up with the coverage because it's all rather similar. So, the, the, <laughs> the last 15 miners are going to be part of a lottery game where they're going to be holding up a number. And you, <laughs> if you've got the number at home, it's your chance to win... Oh, what was that? Somebody winning the lottery. Oh, somebody winning the lottery. <laughs> the people are gradually coming out of the mine one by one. Yes, yeah. the uh, ultimate feel-good story about the release of the trapped miners. And uh, to everyone's delight, maybe except for Sky News, who are probably hoping for at least a couple of tragic deaths. <laughs> the numbers are fascinating, though, aren't they? Yeah. Because <laughs> if you look at it, there, there are 33 of the miners, and they were released on the 13th of the 10th, 2010, which, if you take off the 2000 and just add the 10, yes. adds up to 33. Yes. So... <laughs> so <laughs> if, you're, if you're thinking of playing Chilean minor bingo, think of that, yeah. you know, put down number three. <laughs> Here comes number 15. First time this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the uh, sequence of events was for each rescued miner? They got in the thing, and they took them out. Yeah. They got out of the thing. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> and also to embrace their relatives, then embrace the president. Yes. yes. Then go, gracias Chile. <laughs> to the crowd, and then they got the next one up. You don't get long in the limelight. Yeah, their relatives, there was, they, they, they went the day the thing collapsed, and there are some relatives that have been there the whole time. Which, and well, that's why they've called it Camp Hope, which sounds like a rubbish name, until you think the alternative was Mine Camp. The, the relatives don't forget the mistresses. That was the big story a few weeks ago, that Which women were up? starting to turn up who weren't the wives. I assume that's why the miners all came out in sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> One of the papers ran with, trapped miner has a pick <laughs> on the side. Ironically, his wife would have got to call his mistress a gold digger, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but I was quite impressed because I thought, you know, 
I don't know what they pay miners out there, but like $3 a month? And they've been able to support a wife, a family, and a demanding Chilean mistress. Yeah, they've not spent much of the last three months themselves, have they? <laughs> <laughs> Kept their pennies for Christmas. <laughs> they do get more attractive the longer they're down there. There was a guy who proposed to his wife before this happened, and she said no. And then she proposed to him while he was trapped, which is basically her way of saying, you know what, I really fancy you? When you're buried underground. <laughs> <laughs> I'll really love you when you're dead. I thought it was funny that they kept going on about Christmas. This was the big promise that they'd be out by Christmas. Yeah. Which is funny, these people have been sort of trapped in a confined space, looking at the same faces day <laughs> after day, presumably <laughs> bickering and fighting and trying not to kill each other, and now they get to have a family Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming out of this well? Everyone. 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 <laughs> That is correct. It's, it's not uh, a well, it's it, a shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, I'll fly the shaft. The foreman's very heroic, isn't he? Apparently he sorted them into groups and then they play dominoes and they sort of keep fit and... Yeah, they kept fit. Well, I don't see. They carried on mining as well. <laughs> it's had, I'm not... If this studio goes down and someone said, can you just carry on doing jokes for a few months while we sort this out? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, do we know what's going to happen to the mine shaft talking about money to be made from this? It's being turned into a theme park. <laughs> um, It'll be it's a fantastic a... ride. <laughs> in one way. It's quite slow. <laughs> uh... The queues are horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's likely to stay in mine, though, since the drilling company has discovered massive reserves of gold and silver and copper during the rescue drilling. That makes me even more distrusting of the fact that they've found more gold and everyone's going, Chile's brilliant. Mm. And I smell a rat. Yeah. And the Chilean president used to own a TV company. I'm just saying, if this was an episode of Scooby-Doo... <laughs> ...with his mask off and Murdoch's underneath going... <laughs> ...and you all watched it for hours. Um, now, I know what you mean, though. The idea that the company that is responsible for the collapse has found more gold as a result mm. of the collapse and is taking the credit for the rescue. Look at these guys, we got them out of the ground where we put them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slightly dodgy. What happened to Ariel Ticona? Uh, is, he, is he a father? Is he... he is, he is indeed a father. His mm -hmm. wife gave birth via VT link to the mine shaft. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the baby conceived in the same way, or...? <laughs> I dread to think, but uh, Ariel tuned in just in time to see the Chilean president leaning into shot to kiss his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um, the male... Yeah. The Daily Mail. The Voice of Sanity. The Voice yeah. of Sanity, yeah. yes. <laughs> they've, they've criticised the size... Foreigners down hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's the correct answer, at some point. <laughs> now, the male criticised the size of the BBC presence there. Do you know oh, how big it was? Um, they can't find a tragedy that doesn't involve attacking the BBC. <laughs> End of the world, BBC tried to cover it. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's probably about, about, I mean, it's a big story, I suppose. The BBC sent quite a few people there, they're probably moaning about the number of journalists. How many journalists did they send? Twelve? Twenty-five? Twenty-five. That's spot on. Very good. The 24-hour news channels have been enjoying this story, mm. but there was just a hint that they might be running out of things to say. Let's have a look. So far, the only miner to emerge from the tube with a beard. <laughs> so, this is the amazing rescue of Los Thirty-Threeos, the 33 Chilean miners. One miner who may not be looking forward to returning to the surface is Yoni Barrios, whose wife is furious after finding out he has a mistress. Well, at least for the last 70 days, she knows where he's been. <laughs> According to the Times, the claustrophobic escape capsule takes 15 minutes to travel 700 metres. If you want to imagine what that's like, take a trip on the Northern Line. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Victoria, here are yours. Oh, finishing touches, spot the balls. <laughs> Two. Ooh, reservoir postman. <laughs> Another marriage. Hooray! Hmm. We're going to be in debt for our whole lives. Oh, good. <laughs> Where do you want to start? A new Labour leader? That's very exciting. Well, let's start on the new Labour leader, shall we? Yeah. Well, let's have a look at some of the exciting faces who are in the new Labour cabinet, first of all. I'm worried about this, but in my pre-recording anxiety dream, somebody asked me the question, which one's Yvette Cooper and which one's Theresa May? <laughs> and I woke up screaming, it's going to happen now, isn't it? It is going to happen now. <laughs> Victoria? Yeah? Who's this? <laughs> 
the two people that you feared it might be. Right. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's Jim Murphy is his name, and That's defense is his game. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good clue, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like I could always make a guess after a clue like that. <laughs> Anybody know who this is? Is that Mary Creer? Hooray! Oh! <laughs> How do you know her? Um, I, I read the papers. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's one of those little tricks after 300 <laughs> years you pick up. <laughs> They're all the yeah. same. Both Miller bands, Clegg and Cameron, these identical... I mean, imagine being at school with them. They'd all be that guy. Can you imagine being at school with them, Ian? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Some of them, not Ed, obviously. He went for comprehensive. Um... <laughs> At least when it was, you know, Kinnock and Thatcher, you knew the difference. You can show us 18 pictures of these new cabinet ministers and shadow cabinet ones and... I've only got one more. Who's this? <laughs> Phil Miliband. <laughs> He's the even older brother. <laughs> he was really cross when they both stood against him. Um, no, this is uh, uh, Ivan Lewis. Um, here is a familiar face. Yeah. Is that the woman that put the cat in the bin? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is Gillian Duffy. You've made her sort of French, Gillian Duffy. I think. <laughs> I don't I don't think, think she's Gillian like that, Duffy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she'd be very angry about anything other than anglicising her name, so... <laughs> Gillian Duffy. Uh, the woman who Gordon Brown was over her calling bigoted. And she was at the Labour conference, and she took the opportunity to have an in-depth discussion with Tony Benn. Let's see how that went. I have two grandchildren. I'm concerned at their future. Settling in for the speech, Mrs Duffy shared her thoughts with Tony Benn. Except she... <laughs> <laughs> the honest response, isn't it, to the public's <laughs> opinions? <laughs> Clegg and Cameron were meant to be different. They were meant to be leaders of opposing parties, and they're becoming more identical by the day. Nick Clegg keeps saying it's the right government for the right time, which I think is just a seedy way to sort of dignify opportunism. You know, he would have made a pact with the Klingons if it meant a sniff of power. I don't know. I think the Klingon manifesto was pretty good. <laughs> no, no, no. I've got to disagree here because the Klingons have shown in the past that they're hell-bent on world domination, so I'm glad the Liberal Democrats are in there with them. <laughs> <laughs> and the Klingons always get the Lib Dems to make the policy announcements. Absolutely. <laughs> they're going to blow up a whole planet. They say, oh, get the Lib Dem to announce it. The Lib Dem party in this arrangement is the equivalent of the guy you see on Star Trek walking around the planet who you've never seen before. Is the first one to get killed. That's the Liberal Democrats in this <laughs> New Shadow Cabinet, and yes. Alan Johnson, who you've already mentioned, um, yes. was made Shadow Chancellor. What did he say his first act was going to be? He said his first act was going to read up an economics primer. Yeah. I haven't made that up. No, no he hasn't. He's going to face it just very slightly, but that's pretty much exactly what he said. Pick up a primer economics for beginners. You just read your way into the job. <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> Um, meanwhile, at the well, Tory... Well, two schools of thought on that. One is yes. that it's quite embarrassing to have your major office of state um, given to a man who has uh, no maths O-level and yeah. doesn't understand figures. But then we did have Gordon Brown in charge, who was an economist <laughs> and was meant to be very good with figures, and we're where we are now. Mm. So you take your pick. <laughs> I'll go to the postman. <laughs> the economy will recover. Probably not today. Maybe lunchtime tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, at the Tory conference, Eric Pickles, the new community secretary, was there. What were people betting Pickles would do at some point that week? Um, he'd get his own postal code. <laughs> <laughs> Go, uh, bloody onion rings. <laughs> uh, it was Labricks, and they were offering odds on him being spotted in a curry house in Birmingham. <laughs> during the week at the conference, and uh, what happened? Well, he spotted himself in a curry house <laughs> and posted the picture on Twitter. Do you reckon when he goes for a curry, he sort of says to the waiter, can I have some poppadoms, and... <laughs> you haven't got any pickles, have you? <laughs> Does anyone know the name of the curry house in question? Edwina's <laughs> Curries. <laughs> There's a restaurant in South East London called The Taste of Lewisham. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'd say no more. <laughs> but I've never been tempted to pop in. <laughs> <laughs> the 
there's another restaurant on the way to Stoke Newington, which has combined the two words of chicken and pizza, and they've sort of like shortened them and put them together. And, they, and the place is called Chickpeas. <laughs> Z chick it's, there's never anybody in there. <laughs> because no matter how drunk you are, you still think chick <laughs> <laughs> no, But I'm sure it's lovely in case the lawyer's watching. If he's not watching, <laughs> I'm sure the food's awful. <laughs> Anyone want to know the answer? Yes, yes we do. Yes. <laughs> Love me Tandor. <laughs> it could have been Papa Dumb Preach. <laughs> Jim Sweeney's joke. That's Jim. I know Jim. Oh, you're right. Uh, according to the Daily Mail, Eric yeah. Pickles did something in William Hague's hotel room at the party. <laughs> <laughs> Around 25 years ago. Anyone <laughs> remember or know what that was? He didn't share a hotel room with him? He's... He did <laughs> share a room he with did. him. No. They would look like sort of planes, trains and automobiles, wouldn't they, together? <laughs> Just imagine Haig shouting at him in the morning. Said, if you're going to tell us, that's a dreadful impression, and I'm going to immediately retract this entire bit. <laughs> Just swear, and then they can't use it. Balls, fannies. <laughs> Sorry, that's the home and foreign office. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's balls. <laughs> That was a trap. It's past 9.15. They can use it. <laughs> no, uh, for a prank, uh, yes. in inverted commas, mm. oh, those witty Tories, uh, <laughs> he removed all the furniture from Haig's room, including the bed. So when Haig got back later that night, he had to sleep on the floor. It's not known if his driver had to sleep on the floor, too. <laughs> How did he remove all the furniture? What did he do with it? I think he's using well, he's removed some... in the archaic uh, sense of et. <laughs> and um, Boris Johnson was at the conference too. Let's have a look at the masterful way Boris manages to deflect Paxman's questions, first by throwing in baffling classical terms and then hijacking the camera. Uh, you chose this day of all days on which so many families in this country are going to be losing their child benefit to say, let's not be beastly to bankers. Right, I think. I, 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 don't, I hesitate to accuse you of ignoratio elenchi. <laughs> <laughs> For the third time, for the third time in this interview, you know, I mean, how, you are paid a very considerable sum by the BBC. We were the, the quantity of which we have yet to discuss. <laughs> uh, Of course, some ministers in the new government rely on rather more everyday terminology than Boris's. Here's Children's Minister Tim Lawton being asked about the child benefit cut. I'm very happy with the policy that George Osborne announced yesterday. It's tough, it's a difficult choice, but it's fair. End of. So it doesn't need a review, it doesn't need anything looking at. End of. You, you said we need to see what comes along End later. Of. <laughs> <laughs> End of. Now you're going to try and... End of. <laughs> Your career. You know. <laughs> so when I introduced him as uh, the children's minister, it should have been the childish minister. <laughs> it's horrible when they try and talk. The worst part of the whole conference was Cameron when he was talking about the football with Merkel. And he went, oh, it's just dreadful watching them slot another one past our lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like meeting like a girlfriend's dad and having him lean in and go, so do you like bums or titties? <laughs> 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 Why did uh, David Cameron single out this girl? <laughs> There's something missing in that photograph. It's her teeth. It is. Oh, is she the girl who gave the money um, that she got from the tooth fairy and she sent it in? She did, she did. She offered a, a pound uh, that she got from the tooth fairy. You'd want more than a pound for a gap like that, wouldn't you? Probably <laughs> <laughs> worth 20 quid, what's gone missing? <laughs> Nice. Maybe it's tax avoidance, maybe it was one for the government and then another five for me. <laughs> um, but she, she did it to make the country better and pay for jobs. Ah, quite sweet, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Really, you feel guilty now, Mr John. Yeah, I think if I want you actually said, if pay for jobs. <laughs> it's sweet that a girl of six still believes in a conservative government. <laughs> Um, there have been two big policy rows recently, haven't there? Child benefit? Yes. And um, how to pay for higher education. And um, um, in one case, um, you're not going to get it. A 
above a certain level, and in the other case, your children are going to have to pay. So um, they're both solved. End of. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they've saved a billion pounds. OK, and they're spending 13 billion on a fortnight of sport in 2012. Yeah, good Sorry, point. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and tuition fees. Raising the cap on fees could mean students incurring twice the debt they currently do. It's not funny, but it's topical. Nick Clegg's <laughs> in a bit of a pickle well, about it's this. It's quite funny. In what it's sense? It's... Well, and the Lib Dems said before the election, absolutely, we will not raise tuition fees. Yes, we that's... all pledge we will not raise tuition fees. And now, as a sign that they've become proper politicians, mm. um, they've abandoned that pledge <laughs> and increased tuition fees. The man they got to review university mm. uh, fees has been given 18 honorary doctorates. For, so I've, I've got no idea what it's like to get a degree because he just keeps getting given them. The man they got to investigate uh, public finance waste, Philip Green, avoided £285 million pounds worth of tax by putting all his assets in his wife's name. It's not, they might as well just get Karen Matthews to do an investigation into how families could further reach their budget in hard <laughs> times. You, how can you trust a man who's... Tax bill is 285 million. God, what's ridiculous? I would pay that. You pay that because you earned 1.2 billion, you <laughs> fat, greedy shit. <laughs> All change in British politics. Miliband has already appointed a radical new front bench team. According to the Daily Telegraph, Ed Miliband will end up with more women in his cabinet than any British politician in history, with the exception of Boris Johnson when his wife comes home early. <laughs> promised me I wouldn't be forced into doing any painful puns in light of a recent incarnation of mine as Sherlock Holmes. So without any further ado, let's move on to round two. The round of the Baskervilles. <laughs> Buzz when you know what the story is. <laughs> oh, is this toilets? <laughs> yes, it's someone flushing my credibility. <laughs> Well, we can't exactly do a round on the Terence Rattigan you've just done at the National, can we? Ooh, thank you, Ian. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very good. good. It would lose us very, in our very jokes. Very good. Oh, you're very kind. Go. Thank you very it's much. Over. <laughs> it's over. It's <laughs> over. Is it to do with the Commonwealth Games? Yes, it is. I was nearly interested in it this time. <laughs> you know, there was loads of scandal and, yeah. the, and the rooms fell down and there were dogs on the pitch and... Did you stop watching once the sport began? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Originally in the village, they were worried because one of the inspectors said there was excrement where it shouldn't be. <laughs> Not a great description of um, your accommodation for the <laughs> forthcoming weeks. Um, and then the toilet team continued in that a number of the swimmers were ill and had to finish swimming and then run to the toilet. The 100-yard right. dash became the 150-yard dash. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I like? The organiser of the Commonwealth Games, his speech for the opening ceremony, thanked Princess Diana for going. <laughs> and I thought, well, look, we know one thing about that man, he doesn't read the Daily Express. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is the Commonwealth Games, obviously, which is aimed to encourage the spread of democracy, human rights, world peace, and laughing at incompetent foreigners. <laughs> they weren't just incompetent, though, were they? I mean, the, they weren't quite so sweet when you saw the attempts to build the stadium on time which involved very, very small children. They got some children to help. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Blue Peter when you send off for a badge to build guide dogs for the blind. <laughs> <laughs> At least they don't rip their teeth out for cash. <laughs> <laughs> were, were there any other problems with scoring and timekeeping? Yes, there was problems with scoring and timekeeping. <laughs> uh, one boxer was ruled uh, out of the game because he turned up 24 hours too late. And uh, somebody else was given a score of uh, 104 in croquet, which is technically impossible. <laughs> this is extraordinary, though. No one could tell 400 metres runner Tom Druce if he'd qualified for the semi finals. So, according to the mirror, he had to phone home and ask his mum, <laughs> who was watching it on television. <laughs> he did qualify, though, didn't he? Because that would be worse, imagine it, digging it into your mum to have to phone your mum to say, Did I qualify? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> According to The Sun, the Commonwealth Games kicked off in an explosion of noise and colour, after which Prince Charles came out of the lavatory saying, <laughs> I should never have drunk that tap water. 
<laughs> to boost audiences, the organisers gave out thousands of free tickets to primary school children, which sadly they couldn't use as most of them couldn't get the time off work. <laughs> Figures on buzzers, teams. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, this is the, uh, the the North. Is it North Korean or South Korea? I never remember. North Korea, isn't it? Yep. He's the uh, North Korean uh, dictator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a diplomat. I don't have to visit them. Um, <laughs> Um, this is the uh, Kim Jooling, whatever his name is, and uh, he's, he's, that's, his, that's his son there. He's had sewn onto his lapel. They, had, uh, <laughs> they sat in the Korean town square and uh, watched these idiots parading up and down in their boots, you know, identical marching and stuff, you know. Just, just a ludicrous display of conformity. Yes. Yeah. Is pretty much what this is exactly. about. But let, let's just get the uh, North Korean names straight, shall we? Yes, um, who's this? That's Kim Il-sung, Kim Il-sung, the, the previous dictator. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. That's Kim Jong-il. Yeah. Oh. Looking a little bit... <laughs> looking a little bit lonely. <laughs> now, now for his son, yeah. Kim Jong-un. He looks like he might bring hope and optimism to a... ..to <laughs> <laughs> nation. And, uh, so who's this, then? <laughs> it's not Danny Dyer. Is that the other son? It is the other son. Kim yeah. Jong-nam. He's not got the job as next dictator. He's no, given it you to know the younger son. Um, because the father didn't like him. Do you know why he didn't like him? Was it a hat? <laughs> <laughs> Did he dislike him because he's got a small lampshade tied to his index finger? Because <laughs> <laughs> another father's that put them right off you. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. <laughs> In 2001, yeah. he was caught trying to sneak into Japan on a false passport. Does anyone know why? <laughs> Get out of North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> to do what? Did he want to buy evil Western clothes? Eat at McDonald's. Very close. <laughs> Burger um, King. <laughs> no, it's not to do with any of uh, uh, a multitude of choice Chicken restaurants pins. which you could go to. <laughs> Chickpeas. <laughs> Chicken piss sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wanted to visit Disneyland Tokyo. Um, there's uh, another older brother too, Kim Jong Chul. Now, why is he not going to take over? Is he dead? No, he's said to be too feminine. Do we have a picture of him so we may judge this man? No, the... sadly not, but if you imagine the one with the lampshade on the finger yeah. in a dress, that might do it. <laughs> Well, I was right over the border then. <laughs> More ways than one. <laughs> so, Kim Jong-un yeah. has got the North Korean nod. Shall we have a look at him strutting his stuff? Yeah, go on. There he is. <laughs> really getting a lick on. <laughs> is that the best we've got of him, walking from one bit to another bit, and that's it? <laughs> well, no-one had heard of him so. until his father wheeled him out and said, this is your new leader. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit peaky. Yeah. <laughs> He made him a four-star general one day and said the next day, that's it, he's going to take that's, over. That's true. How long has he been a public figure? Um, well, this week. <laughs> Almost two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. So he's doing I mean, well. It's like the Miller Bands. You've never <laughs> heard of them, have you? <laughs> so ITV had a man in the field there and mm. uh, the intrepid reporter attempted to assess the relative popularity of the Kims. Let's have a look how he did it. There are no opinion polls in this country of dictators but I did get a chance to carry out an extremely unscientific measure of the young general's popularity. Well, let's see how popular the new leader will be. Kim Jong-sung. <laughs> Kim Jong-il. <laughs> Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Much more popular. <laughs> At least they applauded, though. It looked, yeah. you know, it looked like they were excited. Can you imagine taking a group of British people and just going, David Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick Clegg. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it hey, actually is Nick Clegg. That's <laughs> <laughs> There are other uh, military uh, orientated countries uh, which are also fond of parading, the Russians being one of them. What did we find out this week, though, about some of their equipment? Anyone know? It's made of cardboard. Yeah. Is that right? No, it's not right. It fires coddles. <laughs> we don't know what the no. opposite is, but good things well, we made out of it. It's inflatable. They've been stockpiling inflatable planes and tanks as decoys. 
And uh, I think we've got a video of uh, a model of a T-80 tank being inflated. Ah. Here it goes. <laughs> God, we've, we've got oh. the most special footage in all the yeah. world in this week's show, haven't we? We've got one bloke walking across a car park, we've got a tank slowly inflated. <laughs> Is there any chance? I mean, I, I know the heaven really isn't here on Earth, but can we possibly see that man crossing the car park one more time? <laughs> Just, you know, there's something just so funny about it that I'm sure yeah. it'll, it'll occur to us one day what it is. <laughs> Put the Benny Hill music on it. <laughs> we, we, we can Maybe do we that bit We can do that bit ourselves when it comes up. Here we go. <laughs> Good start. And go. Good start. And go. Good start. And go. Where's the nurse? Where's the nurse in the suspenders? <laughs> This is the unveiling of Kim Jong-un as successor to Kim Jong-il. Chief of the North Korean Army, Ri Yong-ho, had a message for the nation saying, if the US imperialists and their followers infringe on our sovereignty and dignity even slightly, <laughs> we will blow up the stronghold of their aggression with a merciless and righteous retaliatory strike. Adding LOL, smiley face, kiss kiss. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Queen Elizabeth. It mm. certainly is, yes. Absolutely. This is the new cruise ship, the Queen Elizabeth, that was christened by the Queen this week. I guess this read like a who's who of people who didn't realise they were still alive. There was Sir Jimmy Savile, <laughs> Vera Duckworth from Coronation Street, and Alan Wicker. <laughs> oh. They're all very glamorous. They what are. do you normally have in your front room? <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. What did uh, Jimmy Savile, um, Sir Jimmy rather, have to say of the liner which had just arrived from Italy, where it was built? <laughs> <laughs> yes, which translated as, this fills me with great pride, it all happens in Britain. <laughs> it's not all been good news for the Queen, though. Um, how did she end up beneath Lady Gaga this week? Most uh, influential women in the world, made right. up by somebody. That's right, she came to 42nd. And uh, Lady Gaga was number seven. Well, and, and the reason why she's most powerful, do you, do you know? Lady Gaga, more powerful? she's good for the butcher's business. <laughs> <laughs> she's reinvigorated pop music. And, and what about Michelle Obama? Do we know why she was top? She's reinvigorated. It would be literally so <laughs> She shares pillow talk with the president, or just something kind yeah. of... Yeah, it was because of who she was married to, and because she has good arms. <laughs> Do you think lists like this marginalise women? Paul, Ian, John, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Mm. Uh, Hampshire Police Efit, Bruce Willis, Natasha Gregory's cat, and the staff of the Ooh La La Holiday Resort in the Maldives. Blondes. Don't get too excited. <laughs> A Lithuanian travel agency is launching a blonde-only resort. That's why they're in the news. That is true. That is and very the cat true. has been dyed by its owner. And this man in the e-fit had dyed hair. Has Bruce Willis dyed his hair? He was in Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gritty film about a hair salon. <laughs> you can't take no more peroxide. <laughs> I think John's got it. John got it right. It's, they've all been criticised for their hair colours, apart from Bruce Willis, who doesn't have any hair. <laughs> Although he did recently wear a rather fetching meat hairpiece. Would you like to see Bruce wearing his meat hat? No, thank you. Good. <laughs> unfortunately, we're not allowed to. A Lithuanian travel agency called Ulala has been criticised for its plans to open a holiday resort in the Maldives, staffed entirely by blonde women. According to one newspaper, the resort is going to have young blonde women as waitresses. Sounds fine. Might go. Young blonde women as reception staff. Could be interesting. And young blonde women flying the aeroplanes to the resort. <laughs> Maybe I'll give it a miss. <laughs> Do you remember those stories about how much male pilots go out boozing the night before the yeah. flight? Nice young blonde lady pilot, that's what you need. If you're flying the plane, flying the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Hampshire Police EFIT as well. Hampshire Police issued an EFIT picture uh, trying to trace a burglar who stole £60 from a woman in Stockbridge. Here is the full picture. <laughs> oh dear. And they did call him the lettuce man, didn't they? Or lettuce head. Lettuce head, yes, they did. Apparently, when they asked him why he sprayed his hair like lettuce, he just said, Cos. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so I'll probably go. <laughs> That's all right. There was, uh, there was no word on how he was dressed. <laughs> I'll come with you. <laughs> we, uh, we also have Natasha Gregory's cat. Um, the owner gave an interview to The Sun explaining her actions in dying the cat pink. What did she say? Anyone know? I need <laughs> medical help. <laughs> <laughs> How do you dye a cat pink anyway? Oh, you just get one of them candy floss machines and stick your cat on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would do it. Yeah. She said, I did it to match my hair. <laughs> so, she failed. <laughs> uh, the RSPC returned the cat. Not sure the RSPC? That was the Royal Society for the Protection of Cruelty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the RSPCA returned oh. to its own. expanded. <laughs> they're specialising. They've merged with the AA. <laughs> the RSPCA returned to I'm Felix and I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what did they say about the cat's condition? He's in the pink. <laughs> Sorry. They said it had been dyed very evenly. <laughs> Which is so important to cats, I think. <laughs> so the RSPCA have washed the cat and it has now been returned to its normal colour. All except for a stubborn pink spot right underneath the tail. <laughs> you may need a wire brush. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, the Pipe Club of Norfolk newsletter. Now, I'd hate you to think that the Pipe Club of Norfolk is nothing more than a bunch of rustic yokels with ruddy faces puffing away on silly-looking pipes. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> and we start with, I do what, but I don't what, the Queen admits. I do anything for love, but I don't do that. <laughs> I do occasionally use the first-person pronoun instead of the normal one, <laughs> but I don't like it. I do reign, but I don't rule. That'd Constitutional joke. <laughs> Glad you're with me there. Um, no, the answer is, uh, I do get bored, but I don't let on. Well, she just has. <laughs> Precisely, she did. At a recent state banquet, Nicola Sarkozy asked the Queen oh, if yeah. she ever got bored. The Queen replied, yes, but I don't let on. She then yawned and fell asleep in her soup. <laughs> Next, Pipe Club annual darts night ended with what? Treble 18, single 11, double top. <laughs> ended with multiple injuries due to difficulty of throwing darts in a smoky room. <laughs> no, they have to smoke outside, apparently. <laughs> They don't have to throw the dance through the window, do they? <laughs> Ended with no harm done by a group of eccentric but essentially quite pleasant people. <laughs> Ended with disappointment as nobody remembered to bring the board. <laughs> um, a most welcome plate of complimentary sandwiches is the answer. <laughs> That is a proper headline. <laughs> you would expect complimentary sandwiches to be welcome, wouldn't you? Hello, <laughs> how did you do? <laughs> did you win? I'm made of cheese. <laughs> the uh, darts tournament was won by Len, who celebrated the only way pipe smokers know how, with a damn good shag. <laughs> Next, what three musical dwarfs? Pavarotti's autopsy revealed. <laughs> Day of Christmas. <laughs> three love games to me. Three musical dwarves. <laughs> one was four foot two, one was three. <laughs> the answer is Cheryl's birthday gift for Cal. <laughs> Next, what reflects nation's parlous financial state? Huge mirror in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be disastrous drop in pipe sales? It is something to do with pipes. Plastic pipes, cardboard pipes. It, it's similar, yes. Cardboard no. pipes? <laughs> <laughs> they're cheap <laughs> and they're dangerous. Yes. <laughs> it's a design flaw. It's like having fireworks that fit in your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. <laughs> uh, it is lack of prize at pipe club cigar smoking competition. <laughs> 
Yes. So, <laughs> next. What is bad for my marriage, but I just can't stay away? The wife. <laughs> <laughs> is this a footballer? Is it hookers is bad? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Ikea is bad for oh. my marriage, but I just can't stay away. This is a woman who shops so much at Ikea that her marriage has collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Victoria, five, and Paul and John, six. <laughs> and I leave you with news that at a London sperm clinic, another delivery is safely handed over by the star donor. <laughs> In Chile, at a slightly smaller mining disaster, the rescue operation is not quite so high-tech. And in London, a clear-the-air meeting begins to falter as the debate turns once again to who broke the plastic horse in Buckaroo. <laughs> Good night. on animals that start with H. Just think of the fun Stephen Fry is going to have with that. QIXL is next on BBC Two. Do you have to do that whole bit or just what I said about Philip Green? Yeah. I said that though, didn't I? Not, not, yeah, yeah. Not, not in a good legal way. <laughs> Does that mean that's going to go to air, that bit, yeah, if yeah. I called him a fat, greedy shit? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> That'd be me banned from Top Man. Where will I get my cardigans? <laughs>